want to be in control. Who do over to anybody else because I would be in control of me for one hour. Benefits. It's a complicated topic. That's why Ask Life Benefits Advisors are there. They help. The fallout from the GOP healthcare failure is that President Trump now knows that he cannot rely on the political establishment. So now is the time for the 45th president to redefine and realign coalitions in Washington. No longer need the president rely on Ryan, the establishment, and the coalitions that have hung together to dictate policy and legislation that rarely benefits the American people, but instead benefits them. The truth? Washington, as you already know, is entrenched in establishment. K Street lobbyists control Congress with money and influence who for too long have dictated the agenda of our legislature. And yet, for some reason, we believed that a president who had the House and the Senate could do almost anything. But on Friday night, we learned that elected Republicans weren't ready to take care of the people's business. Mr. President, Americans elected you because they believed you could shake things up. You gave Ryan and the establishment a chance. It's now time to create your own rules, your own coalitions. Forget about party lines, freedom caucuses, interest groups. Instead, rely on your instincts and your gut, which have always served you well. The ones that took you from the boardroom to that golden escalator that brought you to the White House. The people who elected you, elected you because you spoke from the heart. You spoke to them, and you spoke like them. They liked your unconventional style. They liked that you weren't like the politicians. All they want is jobs, food on their tables, and the ability to live safe and decent lives. They're not interested in the games that the people in Washington play, and they could care less about labels. Tomorrow is a new day, and there's much to be optimistic about. Neil Gorsuch, one of the most talented, respected, temperamentally suited justices nominated for the United States Supreme Court. The Keystone Pipeline has a permit and is ready to roll. There are troops on the ground like never before in Syria and Iraq. And ISIS, like in promise, is about to be squashed like the cockroaches that they are. Your executive orders are exactly what you promised. Jobs are being brought back to America, and the wall is starting to be a reality. Tax cuts and infrastructure are up next. You already know that you can't rely on members of your own party, because within that party are factions and caucuses and groups who would rather fight with each other than win for us. And I know you still believe in your speaker. But I'm thinking, he either doesn't know how to count, or he doesn't have a clue. We learned a lot about loyalty. We learned a lot about uh, the vote-getting process. We learned a lot about some very arcane rules in, obviously, both the Senate and in the House. And so it's been, certainly for me, it's been a very interesting experience. But now every group, every collective, every caucus is emboldened by their strength of 5 or 10 or 15. And the more they are emboldened, the more the party is weakened. So, it's time for the man who campaigns under this banner to work his plan. It is time for that man to look out on the august body of Congress and decide who in that Congress irrespective of the side of the aisle that they sit, is ready to work for the American people. Not who wants to be a part of a clique, or who wants to be a hater, or who wants to be left or right. We've got to get back to who's willing to work for us. Reach out to them. We don't care if they're in a caucus, or if they're in a clique, or if they're on the left, or the right, the middle, or if they're hanging upside down like a bat from the ceiling. If you can make a deal with them to make America great, do it. Party is no longer relevant.
Hello, come on, Las Vegas, and welcome to Face the Tribune with the legendary Orlando Veras. I'm your host, Chris Garcia, and that was one of Radio Tribune's favorite. That was Fox's judge to me giving it to the Republican Party and, and giving it to our uh, uh, Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, who I think he should step down besides James, Com- James Comey boss. I think that. I mean, that was the one that said, that's the one that said that uh, Paul Ryan yes, should. Yes, yes. Yes. No, that was. Yes, that, it was. That's what she was no, no, no. Paul Ryan, you want me to play that one? Now? Yeah, but she, she, was talking, she was talking about. She was talking about Paul Ryan should step down because he didn't deliver. No, but that's, that's the one. I one. Want. There's one. There's another one. That's the Can one. I one because I've been people? saying that from from January 20. Yeah, I've right. been saying that Paul Ryan and the uh, director coming should yes. should that's be taken down. About. Completely. They should know okay, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The average American has got seven different websites before booking a hotel. Paul Ryan needs to step down as Speaker of the House. The reason? He failed to deliver the votes on his health care bill, the one trumpeted to repeal and replace Obamacare. The one that he had seven years to work on. The one he hid under lock and key in the basement of Congress. The one that had to be pulled to prevent the embarrassment of not having enough votes to pass. But this bill didn't just fail. It failed when Republicans had the House, the Senate, the White House. And the timing? It failed within the first 70 days of President Donald Trump's administration. A president who made replacement of Obamacare the hallmark of his campaign, and then used valuable political capital to accomplish it. You know, Americans elected the one man they believed could do it. A complete outsider. Someone beholden to no one but them. And Speaker Ryan, you come in with all your swagger and experience and you sell him a bill of goods, which ends up a complete and total failure. And you allow our president in his first 100 days to come out of a box like that? Based on what? Your legislative expertise, your knowledge of the arcane ins and outs of the bill writing process, your relationships, what, your drinks at the Hay Adams with your pals? Folks, I want to be clear. This is not on President Trump. No one expected a businessman to completely understand the nuances, the complicated ins and outs of Washington and its legislative process. How would he know which individuals upon whom he would be able to rely? Many of them friends and establishment colleagues of Speaker Ryan. You, on the other hand, Speaker Ryan, knows very well who are the 15 hardliners, the 10 moderates, and all the other ones. You, of course, know their demands. And if you didn't, why didn't you? Some of them actually shut down the government over Obamacare, and you couldn't figure out what you needed to do to get their support? You knew no Democrat was going to support it, and that you would have to rely on Republicans. How could you possibly misjudge this? And where was the whip Scalise in all of this? How tough a lift was this? And why start with this if you're not sure you've got the votes? Now, I certainly have not spoken with the president about any of this. But I can only imagine that he and his aides took on health care because they believed you had his back. And you didn't. You didn't even test the waters. You had no consensus. And I hate it when Schumer and Pelosi get to beat their drums and talk about what a great day it is for America that President Trump fails when even they know that Obamacare is a total disaster. The president, on the other hand, is handling this with dignity. And he doesn't seem to want to criticize you saying this. 
I want to thank Paul Ryan. He worked very, very hard. I will tell you that. Mr. President, all reports are that you wanted to handle the tax cuts first, but that Ryan convinced you to go with health care. If that's the case, not only has he hurt you with his health care debacle, but the ripples that will hurt you as you try to overhaul the tax code will come back at you. The Freedom Caucus, who were emboldened by their win with this health care failure, will now dig their heels in on the tax cuts. Ryan has hurt you going forward, and he's got to go. The shame of this is that in putting, in addition to putting your faith in some, someone who did not have your back, you made the decision, as opposed to letting Obamacare explode, as it inevitably will, you decided to take it on anyway. In two years, it's going to explode like you've never seen an explosion. Nobody's going to be able That was our, our, one of our, our biggest uh, cheerleaders. We love Judge uh, Janine Pirro. We love her on Fox News. And uh, what she was saying was, was absolutely true. The only thing that I disagree with her about, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there, is that Donald Trump is a smart man. Donald Trump is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar business. Donald Trump knows that he didn't build one casino, he didn't build one high rise, he didn't build one hotel without friends. He's in one of the toughest real estate markets in the country. I lived in New York City for a while. You get nothing there done unless you have a lot of friends. You have to have friends uh, in the political uh, uh, realm there. You have to have friends in the real estate realm. You have to have union workers behind you. You have to have so many things to get things done that there's no way in the world that, uh, you know, he didn't think that he had to have friends. Uh, when you come in, in a lot of ways, people don't understand, but Paul Ryan actually was more president, more powerful than the president of the United States. He's been in Washington, D.C. He has developed relationships, and he's the Speaker of the House. You have to, if you look at Tip O'Neill or whoever it was that was Speaker of the House when Ronald Reagan was in office, you have to have friends. Uh, when you go to Washington, D.C., I spoke on that a few weeks ago. And I spoke on that when he took office. If you look at some of our shows right when he won, one of the main things I talked about, one of the first shows that I had, was that I hope he understands that it is a difference between running for political office and then governing. When you govern, especially in a city like Washington, D.C., you've got to make friends. And that's one of the main things I know my boss here, he, he talks about term limits. There are no term limits. Those people will be there for 20, 30, 40 years. Well, well that's work. what the new president yeah. needs to do, yeah. uh, create a term limit. Yes. If uh, the president, which is the top job yes. in the nation, if, the, if everybody else, mayors and uh, governors, they have term limit, why not those leeches? They go over there to collect insurance and to collect a retirement plan for the rest of their life, even if they only serve one term. I mean, it is ridiculous. If the president and the governors and the mayors and everybody else can have a term limit, I believe that the Senate and the Congress, even the, the state, Legislation, they have state limit. They have term limit. Why don't, and it, I disagree with you. Donald Trump don't have any friends and they don't gonna become friends with him because they cannot stand the fact that he has completely ruined all their plans and all their dreams. He has created a movement that they have to live with from now on. He destroyed their routine. He destroyed the garbage that they have over there. 
for years and years and years, and now they are pissed. Republicans, Democrats, socialists, uh, independent, whatever they term, whatever they party affiliation is, they are pissed. That's all it is. They cannot stand to find a man like Donald Trump that become, and that's why I like this lady, Janine Judge. You know, she used to be the district attorney of New York. You know, so she's not uh, a saint either, but uh, she speaks the truth. She speak, She's another Ru Rudy Giuliani, you know. And uh, I believe that uh, what she said today, I've been saying it since January 21st of this year. Donald Trump should have completely cut off the uh, Paul Ryan and the uh, director coming. They are not have the best interest. No. And I tell you, if you look the film, when Donald Trump, President Trump, went to the Congress to speak for the first time, no other president have done that. They, the president, have come down to the Congress and and look at Paul Ryan. And one side he was Michael, Michael, uh, what's the vice president's last name? Michael, Mike Pence. Mike Pence. And in the other side it was Paul Ryan. And he is like this, like a cynical, <laughs> cynical eyes in him. He is, he cannot he never did like Donald no, Trump. He, he never did. The only reason he's there is because Mike Pence. And I think Mike Pence should make a decision and decide he wants to be the vice president and maybe someday the president or he wants to be president and a French with, with Paul Ryan. <clears throat> because otherwise, He's not going to be doing anything, you know. Uh, he's not doing Trump a favor by keeping Paul Ryan in there. I understand they are friends. I understand there is loyalty, but it has to be loyalty for the other person too, for the President of the United States. That's what your loyalty should be, you know, because... Uh, Someday he might be the president. Yeah. Very well, after eight years, he might decide to run for president. And uh, it happened with with Bush. It happened with, uh, uh, who was the other one? Johnson, I think it was. Uh, the, was the vice president for, for Kennedy, right? Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. You know, it, Normally, vice president have more chances to become president than a, an outsider, yes. you know. So that's the only reason why I believe that uh, Mike Pence should choose his priorities a little bit better. That's all. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. And uh, that's uh, that lady. She's. She got more, she got more viewers than we do, but uh, I've been saying that for, for three months yes, now. Yeah. I don't like it. Uh, and uh, Comey, he's playing the two sides of the paint. He doesn't know which side he wants to go, you know. And he is deteriorating the quality and the reputation of the agency that he is directing right sure. now. It's no, uh, they're working with no morals in there. There's no inside moral in the Department of, uh, of Justice and uh, the FBI. You know, the agents are not as proud as they used to be of the, and that's my opinion. I don't have any proof to that, so it's nothing I can said to yeah. 
nothing I can see, then I can prove anything, but, you know, that's the way it is. And now, with another issue that bothers me, is my fellow countrywoman, Ivana Cancela, become the latest victim of Harry Reid, and uh, she is uh, she's creating a, a she, well, first of all, let me give you a little background about this little uh, um, becoming from a, a Cuban family because uh, she's not Cuban. She cannot be Cuban being such a socialist like the I think she is. Okay? She is she draw a bill Bill 223 Senator Bill 223 where the police department any law, any Nevada law enforcement cannot give any information to the federal agents to enforce the immigration laws. Wow. She's tied in, she's tied the hands of the police officers, yeah. the sheriffs, wow. the, the, the constables, uh, the bailiff, the marshal, anybody they want to enforce the law, the immigration laws in Nevada will be arrested if that bill pass. Wow. How can she do that, for Christ's sake? How can the people, you know, I, I tell you the truth. It is unbelievable how these people are working to destroy this country. These people are getting to the extreme to convert this beautiful, wonderful paradise that is the United States to become a socialist country, to destroy all the freedom that we have, to destroy all the benefits that we have. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. And the most shameful of that is that that woman, her parents, she was born in Phoenix, Arizona, or who knows, uh, maybe in Glendale, California, uh, I mean Glendale, Arizona, and uh, who knows where, but it's in, uh, in the state of Arizona. Uh, she was born there, but her grandfather was a prisoner of the Castro's regime. How can anybody have a family member to be a prisoner in a communist prison and act so socialist like this Ivana Cancel? Her father wrote, well, maybe that's why. Her father is a frustrated politician in Miami. He ran for, for mayor and lost in the first round. You know, so <laughs> that's probably why they are so upset with the system right. and the United States, but it's the best system there is, you know. And um, he's an executive with Telemundo, a Spanish oh. network, television network, and uh, in Puerto Rico, and uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know too much about the whole family, but she came here because she went to work with Harry Reid in Washington, D.C., some kind of program about children's, uh, I forgot what the, the children was doing. And then Harry Reid doesn't lose, doesn't miss an opportunity to destroy the Latino community. Okay? He 
recruited her to come to work at the culinary room. And the only reason that I assume that uh, she was recruited by Harry Reid is because there's not that many Mexicans in Washington, D.C. working for Harry Reid. Otherwise, the Mexican people would not allow her being uh, the... What do you call when the, is your family is from one country and you you are from you here? Uh, what do you call that? Is is that where they're in their um angel they're it's like interns but it's like a school, it's like a um I don't know, I can think of it. Well she come from Cuban family. Yes. The only reason that she had get the opportunity to get close to Mr. Evil, Harry Reid, is because Cuban descent. She's a Cuban descent. Is because there's not that many Mexicans, because the Mexicans in Nevada will not allow a Cuban to become close to Harry Reid. It's only three Cubans. Then I know that are close to Harry Reid, and that's because when they got close to Harry Reid, there was not that many Mexicans involved in politics. But one is Tony Alamo Sr., the other one is Dario Herrera, and uh, and uh, Mo Dennis. Then he's related to his cousin with Marco Rubio. Mo Dennis is uh, the minority, or the majority now, leader of the Nevada legislation. Uh, he's a senator. Very nice person. I got him on the radio here. And uh, very much a politician. He knows that I got problem with his cousin. He knows that I have express my opinion on him and he still, he give me the decency. He do better than Steve Cicero than I consider it a friend. <laughs> Steve Cicero uh, didn't agree with my opinion on the stadium and he stopped talking to me. <laughs> but that's his problem, not mine. I'm going to still be here. You know, but uh, Ivana Ivana Cancela is the only reason then then she is where she is today is because Harry Reid brought her to the Coronary Union mm -hmm. to train those people to brainwash these people that come in here don't speak English and they want to go to work and Harry Reid was the the, the king of that and now when Ruben Kiewen, another puppet of Harry Reid became congressman the, because the Republicans didn't do their job over here in Nevada. Uh, Harry Reid immediately, boom, put her in the Senate and now she is trying to put the life of every police officer at risk by putting the putting the bill to Senate Bill 223 is supposed to be the most liberal of the Nevada legislation legislature. Reading by Cancela, Sigebrun, Ford, Ruddy and Dennis and also supported by Atkinson, Manindo, Park, Sperman, Wilson, Bill Bray, Axford. This same Bill Bray then is collecting a government check as an assembly woman and is working for a Saudi Arabi, Arabia, Arabi, right? Saudi Arabia? Arabia. 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 Yes. Terrorists organizations. Wow. 
and the people don't ask her to step down? Why are we doing this, people? Why are you allowing these people to take over the country that your family, your parents, your grandparents worked so hard to keep going and to make what it is today? You know, why are these people, why the American people are getting so Stupid, you can say. <laughs> no, no. It's not even a stupid, it's that they don't care anymore. Yes, they are, you know, like that. Oh, oh. It sounds like, what's his name? Uh, the guy they do the show over here. <laughs> Jesus Christ, why are we doing this? I tell you, if we don't do something, we're going to lose the country. Oh, yeah. We are going to lose the country. It's happening. Trump or not Trump? Yeah. It's happening. It's happening. You're absolutely right, Ramonda. You're absolutely 100% right. And it's, it's very simple. It's not difficult. I always say, I use the word conservative American in my show. My, my dad used to always say conservative means common sense. The common sense is... They're being taken care of from cradle to grave, Rolando. I mean, Obama even gave you a phone. The Obama phone. You didn't even have to buy a telephone. He was going give you health care, telephone, food, free housing. <laughs> you think those people are going to vote against him? It's dying. There's no way. <laughs> because that's what, the, that's what Obama did. That's right. Here, food stamp. That's right. Here. Uh, yeah, you uh, are. Welfare, here, California, yeah. here. <laughs> Anything you want to stay home, don't bother me, and don't do nothing. That's what Obama did That's for this country. That's what he did. You know, and like an activist, he failed as president. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I think uh, then uh, people in Nevada, need to wake up, they need to start paying attention to what is around them and try, at least try to save the state. If they cannot serve the save the country, they should save the state because we are losing the last country we can be in. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? Cuba? Venezuela? Ecuador? Colombia? All those countries are communists now. Yeah. What do they want to do? They want to convert. They doing. want to convert the United States into a socialist. I tell you, they should stop playing bingo. They should stop playing all these stupid games they playing and pay attention to what's going on in Castle City. You know, I, I wish I had the money to be there during the session and I would be speaking every single day. And now that I got you here, I know the radio show will be coming on and uh, maybe if we get a little bit lucky, we got the executive producer to, uh, to help out. We got it, we got it. You know. <laughs> and I will go to Cashman City yeah. because um, somebody has to speak up. Yes. And I tell right. you, most of the people, right away, the person they tell you is, what is there for me? What is there for you? What is there for you? Your country, right? What it is, yeah. but half of these people don't know what it is to lose their country. They don't. They don't. That's what it is. They don't. They don't. That's what it is. It's a shame. It's really a shame that we cannot get people to care for this country enough. Yeah. You know. There's not too many Donald Trumps. No. He don't need this job. He really don't need this job. Assuming that he's not losing any money, which technically he is, 
because he's working for free. Yeah. He's not doing, he's not making any money, he donated his paycheck. Yeah. But, he can be making more money. He's, he's got to do, and this is what Judge Janine was, was What are you laughing about? <laughs> this is what, this is you what don't agree with me. She does. I. She does. I was Check just back. smiling. I was just smiling. But I, I, I mean, I agree. It had nothing to do with what you're saying. I agree with a lot of what you're saying, Romano, and I agree with Judge Me. I just think the only thing that I, would, I think, and I was saying this weeks ago, Donald Trump is a nationalist. He is not a Republican. And he's dealing with Republicans. So he doesn't have any constituents. He doesn't have any friends. And he's a smart man. He got he built an empire in the toughest city in the world, in New York City. So he knows that you have to have friends to get stuff done. I don't care how powerful he is, I don't care how smart he is. You didn't he didn't get one real estate building built without having hundreds of friends in New York City. He had unions on his side, he had politicians on his side. He had all kind of people that were working with him. When he goes to Washington, D.C., with those great ideas that he has for our country, that's why we all voted for him. But he can't get one piece of legislation passed unless he has friends, unless he goes rogue, which is what Judge Janine and Hannity and a lot of people are saying. Just use your executive powers and just push it through like Obama did. Stop trying to make friends because they are trying to destroy him. They're trying to destroy him a lot, though. And by not passing the health care bill, they're messing with tax reform right now. That's what they're messing with because he was going to use some of the money that he saved reforming Obamacare and use it to give tax breaks. So not only have they destroyed the health care plan, but they've also destroyed his tax plan. He has, at this point, he has to go rogue. He has to do what Obama did. Obama came in, he was an unpopular president, he had no friends in Washington, D.C., he was a one-term senator from the state of Illinois, he knew nothing about politics. He didn't even finish it. He didn't even term. finish it, and what he did was he came in, he tried to pass Obamacare, they threw it out, even his own party threw it out, and he just went rogue. He just spent the next two or three years just signing into executive order all of these things which Trump is trying to undo. Just use your executive pen and just undo it. Just undo it. Do exactly what Obama did. Stop trying to go through the legislative branch to get the... You have no friends in Washington, D.C. And you're either going to do one or two things. You're either going to meet friends and make friends, which is going to change you as a person. He will not be the Donald Trump that we voted in the office. Or stay who you are and just use that executive pen. Just write your own laws and sign them in the law. But he messed up. He made a fatal mistake. He went there thinking, I don't trust Mike Pence. I'm telling you that right now. I do not trust him or Paul Ryan, and that's where they're good friends. Both of them are good friends. One's from the state of Indiana. One's from the state of Wisconsin. They're border states. They're both conservative Republicans. They are friends. They see things, the country, differently than Donald Trump does. Donald Trump is a nationalist. They are conservatives. Like myself, in a way, they're more politicians than they care about the country. Donald Trump cares about the country more than I do, more than most Americans do. And that's great. That's why we voted for him. Use your executive pen. Take Obamacare off. Push the tax, plan, the tax breaks through for Americans. Just do it. Stop trying to make friends there because if you make friends, you're either going to change who you are and you're going to become a politician and you're going to have to play their game. Or just use the executive pen like Obama did and just sign it into order. But you cannot do both. You cannot try and make friends there. And that's what he tried to do with the health care. He tried to make friends and Paul Ryan lied to him in his face. That's what Judge did. He didn't spend much time on it because Paul Ryan said, don't worry about it. I got, yeah. it. I got the votes. He lied to him in his face. He needs to be fired. Or he needs to just stop dealing with them all together, boss. Yeah, that's it's one, all it it's is. one or the other, man. That's all it is. I, I it. tell you the truth. I believe that uh, as much as he thinks he knows the politicians, yeah. 
I don't think he know the way the politicians no. work and operate how evil they are. You know, <laughs> he, he doesn't. He doesn't know that. Otherwise, he would not be surrounded by some few people yeah. that they he don't need to. Yeah. You know, but look at over here. Look at here. How they did turn around. They supposed to have this guy donating uh, or putting up 650 million. Yeah. This <laughs> other guy donating and putting in another. So and now one guy pull out. Uh, Anderson, yeah. and now Bank of America, yeah. <laughs> Bank of America loaned the 650 million, loaned, <laughs> it didn't even, they didn't even get involved in the deal, they just loaned the money, right. <laughs> okay, now the taxpayers are going to end up Damn, supplying, <laughs> supporting that stupid Absolutely. stadium, Absolutely. okay, the guy who owned this, the, the team is not going to put any no. money. Other than no. is not putting any money. No. Steve Wynn is not no. putting any money. You know, why? Why are they, go they all going to benefit yes. <laughs> with this stupid stadium? And I said it's stupid, very, very humble because I would call something else. But I'm not a... I'm not a football fan or whatever. What is it? Football. It's a football? football yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not there. Uh, but uh, I believe that they need to uh, start working for the people, not against the people. You know, I like to know what uh, Steve Sisselot is gaining out of there. I wonder what the, he, the piece of the action that oh, he yeah. did. Because he is, he in for, he uh, is the, uh, he was so much into tax, tax, tax. Why? The tax? And they say, oh, it's just a room tax. It don't affect the locals. Yes, it oh, does. locals don't live in weeklies? Locals don't live in a place yeah. where they have to pay room tax? Don't tell me that. You know, it's a stupid to think that way, yeah. you know, but I believe then uh, go back again to the same thing. The people of Nevada need to wake up and need to pay attention what these communists and the legislations are doing because they're going to lose what they have. If we let this socialist, this, I, I cannot get over this uh, Ivana Cancela or whatever her name is. I cannot get over it. How dare you going to tie the hands of police officers? And uh, I'm not switching. I'm not wishy-washy. I always contend that the administration of Metro is corrupted. But the police officers are good police officers. They are hardworking, they are honest people. It's always a bad apple in every basket. Mm -hmm. You cannot avoid that. Yes. Anywhere that you got more than three people, one is going to come out bad. Yes. That is the part of life. Yes. But it would be more difficult because if they see, if the bad apples see that the good apples are looking they're not going to be yeah. uh, doing that much damage. Yeah. You know, that's why they cannot. The people, they come here, and this is the way I'm going to put it up so maybe people can understand. The people that come here, they are breaking an entrance. They're walking into the country, because they saw a door halfway open, right. and they, or they push the door open, right. and they can mean that's breaking an entrance. Right. That's a felony. Yes. That is a felony, and is condemned, is punishment with ten years yes, prison yes, and ten thousand dollars fine. 
I think there should also be a stipulation where you should not be able to either try and re-enter the country, get a visa or anything for a number of years if you're convicted. But that's the law. Absolutely. It is that way. Absolutely. Once you've been deported, yes. uh, right? Can you ask that lady if she knows something about that? <laughs> when people are deported, they can come back in? They're not supposed to. Yeah, they, yeah. When they do anyway. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so right there is the Right there is the answer. You know, if you why you the rob a bank, you go to jail. Huh? The the man that killed, killed that lady in San Francisco. Uh huh. He worked there for ten times. Yes. Ten, ten, times? ten times. Ten times. Yep. Ten times. There you go. The sanctuary city for you. That's right. That's, That's the right. sanctuary city. The fourteen-year-old girl that was raped in Baltimore. Those people were deported four times in four years. Four times. Yep. <laughs> I'm wondering, I wonder if that reflect in the immigration laws, if it reflect on the border patrol, uh, who is embarrassed by all yes. those things. Yes. I don't know how that works, but uh, it's an embarrassing for yes, whoever it is. it is, it's an embarrassing. Yes, it is. Because uh, I don't see any way to to see it any other way. Period. And and boss, this is one thing I want to talk about with you because I mean it's been a great show. There are snitches in that White House. The snitches. I mean, they and know everything that's going on. But maybe it's not the snitches. Maybe the wildcats that Trump are talking about. It's not only in the Trump Plaza. Yeah. They bought those telephones yes. and they bought those rooms in the White House. He should find somebody yes. to clean that yeah, yeah. White House. Yeah. That, I never thought about yeah. that. Yeah. Man, they know everything. That they know everything. On. Yeah. Incredible. They're, they're asking for Devin Nunes. Who was the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee? Now they want him to quit. They want him to quit because he had a meeting with Trump a week ago. How did they find out? They said it was a secret meeting. They asked him today, and he said, I will not tell you about the meeting that I had with the president. It was a private meeting. And how did you all even know about that? He called them to the to the to the Oval Office. They had a meeting. Really? Yes. And they and they said, he said, How did you even know about that meeting? Who is giving out this I, I haven't I haven't been able to watch TV today. Yeah. I've been in meetings all morning, say seven o'clock in the morning. You know. They know everything but, uh, that's what they know everybody he talks to, everybody his people talk to. They know everything that's going on. It's they, it's either wiretap or some snitches. It's or both. It they know everything that he's doing before he does it. It's incredible. I believe it's more wiretap. I'm bugging the yes. rooms, bugging ah. the rooms, you know. Ah. I think uh, President Trump need to wake up, yes. need to do things the right way, yes. need to stop, uh, st stop doing nothing and uh, do something. I so, <laughs> I leave you alone. Oh. You can finish. <laughs> you can finish <laughs> it because I'm getting, I'm getting upset. I'm getting sad, and I don't want to say That's anything. The boss. I don't want to say anything the that I am wrong. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say anything wrong. That's right. That's one of the few patriots, ladies and gentlemen, that's left in this country, and he's just getting upset. He's tired of what's going on. We are giving our country away. We're changing our country for the worse. And uh, it's just ridiculous, man. I mean, you know, it's why we voted Obama and, and, and out of office. It's why we voted Hillary. We didn't vote her in. We voted for Donald Trump. And we're just going back and doing the same thing. We, 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 we've we got to stop what's going on. We're getting, uh, you know, these, these people are getting sick and tired of it. We're going to have a revolution in this country if we keep going the way that we're going. It is a shame. It's a shame what's going on. You know, we, we elected Donald Trump. Uh, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, I'm a Republican myself, I'm a conservative, 
But I voted in Donald Trump because my party wasn't doing anything. They weren't doing the things that were necessary to be done. And we saw a man who, yes, he's more of a nationalist than he is a Republican. We all know that uh, he's more about the country first. Uh, you know, he doesn't too much care about uh, allowing immigrants in our country, this, that, and the other, because right now he feels like the emphasis should be on the United States of America, on bringing jobs back, on tax cuts, on getting rid of Obamacare, on bringing God back in, in our schools and in our country, on securing our borders. These were the things and the reasons why we voted Donald Trump into office. And uh, here we are, you know, we're not doing anything. We got our own party. I'm, uh, you know, uh, I understand, uh, and I'm gonna talk about this with Chris Garcia, the conservative American, coming up in about eight minutes. I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, I understand uh, that these people have to go home and they have to be reelected. They have the elections coming up themselves. Uh, I don't know what Mike Pence, Mike Pence is never going to hold any kind of office after this again. I don't think he's going to win as president if he runs uh, after this debacle. I don't think that he has Donald Trump's best interests at heart. I think he is a true conservative, but he works for a nationalist president. And I think that uh, if, if you're going to be the vice president, then you have to serve the president. You have to serve our country. And, uh, you know, he's not going to be in office anyway, so I don't know what he has to win or lose uh, by going along with the conservative Republicans who I think are undermining Donald Trump. I think uh, they saw a person that came in and did what they couldn't do, and that's get their message to the people. I think that George W. Bush was a very weak president. I don't think he was very conservative at all. I actually think he was more liberal and more left-wing than he was conservative. I think he set up the Obama agenda before Obama did. I think he continued the Clinton agenda, and I think he set up the Obama agenda even before Obama did. I think it's really been, to me, 24 years of the left-wing agenda ever since uh, Reagan Bush era, who were the last, I think, true conservatives. That's why every time you hear anybody talk about conservatism or talk about uh, the good times of the Republican Party, they always go back to Reagan Bush. Bush Sr., because that was the last true conservatives. They were the last people that did tax reform, welfare reform. And ever since then, you know, to me, between Clinton, Bush, uh, W., and uh, Obama, we've had 24 years, to me, of liberalism, as far as I'm concerned, and of having our, our rules and our laws taken from us. The Constitution has been diminished, I think, in the last uh, quarter century. And I think it's just, a, and, and here we go, they want to keep the same thing going. And I think the Republican Party's message has been weakened. I think they have very little power in Washington, D.C. anymore or all around the world. And they saw this outsider come in and speak to the people the way Reagan used to and got himself elected. But it wasn't one of them. And I don't think they can accept the fact that it wasn't one of them. I think they're very upset that it wasn't Paul Ryan, that it wasn't John Kasich, that it wasn't uh, uh, Senator Graham, or that it wasn't... Uh, the, the guy from Arizona, I forget his name, but uh, John McCain. But I think that they always thought that it would be one of them, and it wasn't. And I think that they would have rather accepted Hillary Clinton as president because at least it was somebody that they could disagree with and hold their own jobs in their election. They cannot speak against Donald Trump, but at the same time, it wasn't one of them that was chosen as president. So I think they're very, very, very upset. Stay tuned to Chris Garcia, the conservative American, in about five minutes. Very, very powerful show today. Uh, we all saw the, the fire that, that our boss here, Rolando LaRoz, has for our country, the love he has for our country. He's just speaking the truth. And uh, I very, very rarely see him get upset whatsoever. He was getting a little upset today, and that's understandable. The country that he loves, he loves the United States of America, and he sees what's happening to it. People speak up. The state of Nevada speak up. And, uh, you know, save our state. You know, like you said, if you, if you don't want to save our country, save our state. This is where we live. And, uh, you know, people just need to wake up all over the country. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we stream live always on RadioTribune.com. Uh, Google us, Chris, uh, Face the Tribune with the legendary Rolando LaRoz. We'll be up in a couple of hours on YouTube. And as always, uh, you know, hit that subscribe button to Face the Tribune. And also read the Las Vegas Tribune, an excellent paper the only independent paper uh, in the city of Las Vegas. And of course, 
We are a subsidiary of the Las Vegas Tribune and Radio Tribune here. Thank you so much for watching. God bless America. God bless our troops. And as I always say, God speak to Donald Trump. He's got a tough job. Thank you.